Hey everyone, welcome to Once Lost Ministries. I'm Flynn and I'm here with Kyle and we thought we would just take a minute out of the day and uh, it's really Thanksgiving Eve, which is kind of a weird thing to say. I heard someone else say that today, Kyle, and uh, we often think of Christmas Eve and everybody gets all hyped up for that. Yeah. But I'm kind of hyped up actually for Thanksgiving more than Christmas sometimes it just gets so busy at Christmas time we kind of lose track of everything it's true it's it's turned into a different thing but are you excited about getting your belly full tomorrow or is there something else going on Flynn well I'm excited for my belly to be full but uh, you know I'm more excited the food won't last forever but God will so yeah. I think you know when I wrapped up the school uh, school week yesterday we talked a lot about with the kids just being thankful to the Lord um, it's so easy to forget. I think, especially for us who live in America, obviously Thanksgiving is an American, um, holiday, it is, yeah. but it's a uh, Christian's daily life, right. To be thankful unto the Lord, not just to be thankful for what we have, but thankful to the Lord. We have such a privilege Amen. Uh, to be able to, to be thankful to the Lord. And uh, sometimes I think we forget. So I thought, I thought I talked to you earlier, I know, and we said, let's just see if we can't do a quick video and encourage everybody, wishing everybody a happy Thanksgiving, yeah. but also really just encouraging everyone to be thankful to the Lord, uh, even in, in, even in tough times, which sometimes is hard to do without the Lord's help. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, man. So um, what, what are your thoughts on Thanksgiving? Are you excited for your belly to be full or do you have other things to be thankful for? Or what's your thoughts on that? You know, what's cool is... Um... Uh, I think I've learned in uh, my wife and our and my life that um, throughout our lives, we've always continually had this phrase that we're in a busy season. And, yeah. um, and we've just basically uh, surrendered to the fact that it's not a season, it's a life. <laughs> we're, we're always running a, a busy race. And um, we used to, as in our younger years, used to think that was a bad thing. But I think God just has us busy ministering in different ways and in uh, different directions. And, and he uses us all like that. Um, all that rambling said, um, I think with all the busyness, we often forget um, the thankfulness in our heart on starting our morning and actually yeah. truly producing a grateful heart, um, yeah. slowing down and seeing family and actually really appreciating um, so many things that we take for granted. And, well, um, I think it's easy to do. I, you know, one of my things that I talk to the kids a lot about, or that I just think about me personally, is it's, it's, especially when it, uh, this time of year, it just seems like every year, the, the, between the nostalgia and the expectations of life and uh, just running that, uh, you know, that rat race, so to speak, uh, we get our minds off the Lord. Yeah. Um, but I, when I do that, when I get my mind off the Lord, it seems like, um, seems like I start complaining a lot and start getting a little bit grumbly and my eyes start getting focused on the outward instead of the inward, um, mm -hmm. biblical things, spiritual things. Yeah. So, I think, um, I think yeah. contentment is the major thing there. With you godliness, take, right. I think that's in the Bible somewhere. Godliness it is. with contentment is great gain. Yeah. First content, uh, first Timothy, first contentment. <laughs> <laughs> first contentment. There you go. Hey, Sadie. Hi Sadie. I'm a, I'm a dog. Yeah. I don't know if she'll uh, come over. She's camera shy. As soon as she knows I'm on a camera or a camera's in front of her, she hates it. Yeah. No, but like what you were saying, um, like it, with the distractions that we often, you know, the things that, that easily turn our eyes off the Lord or just kind of just, just temporarily um, distract us, it, it really does discourage um, in, in such a visible way, at least in my life, with discontentment. And I think that that idea of thanksgiving really um it really spoils that that fruit of the spirit right there to actually um have a humble and grateful heart um, yeah i would i would agree and i think uh uh the antidote to me and that's that's what i wanted to encourage people with is if you're feeling a little bit um down or frustrated just life isn't going the way you want it to people aren't doing what you want them to do yeah. Um, things aren't working out your expectations of life. I know for me, I have high expectations in every area and it oftentimes just doesn't seem to work out. So, you know, in reality, I think that, um, you know, I get frustrated from time to time and I feel like, well, how do I, you know, how do I, um, 
how do I get out of that mode? How do I get less frustrated? And so I think the only way for me biblically is to get my mind back on the Lord. Amen. So yeah. my encouragement, I think for, for, for me anyway, and hopefully it encourages others is get your mind back on the Lord and off of all the stuff. And I, I told the kids, you know, in reality, I think, um, that we have to, um, kind of almost maybe make a list. I don't know. I told them, I said, look, if you start feeling like you're complaining and stuff, take time and make a list of things you're thankful to the Lord for. Make a list of, of even beyond that, make a list of, of the Lord himself, uh, uh, qualities and characteristics of who he is. Uh, if it, if it takes that much, um, effort, you know, to just get your mind back on him and off the junk. So yeah. I guess that'd be my encouragement, you know, um, thankfulness is almost like, I guess I would call it an antidote for uh, crabbiness or complainingness. And, and you can't, I, I know in James it talks about too, you know, the, you can't praise God and curse God at the same time. Right. But you mm. also can't complain and grumble and murmur and, and be thankful. Yeah, you're right. Him at the same time. So um, for those of us, maybe that get frustrated or just kind of down or on ourselves, you know, focused on ourselves too much, I would say, take time and really, it seems simple maybe, but take time and just really, Lord, thank you for being the creator of the universe. Thank you mm. for giving me your son. Thank you for, um, just be listening to me talk right now, you know, I mean, and you can go through the scriptures and come up with a list of probably a thousand different characteristics of the Lord pretty easily. Yeah, um, just, to get our, just to get our minds back on him, I guess. Yeah, um, and uh, I I was going to share a little bit from Psalm 105, and I know you had a couple things to share. So, um, uh, do you want to share a little bit first, or do you want no. me to share first? What are your thoughts? I, I would love to hear Psalm 105. All right, so um, I'm just going to share a few verses from it. So, if you guys are listening and you have a Bible available, go ahead and open up to Psalm 105, and uh, I'm just going to read a few verses just to encourage us this time of year. And uh, it starts out like this, verse one. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. And I think that summarizes not only for the Christian life, but for the ministry that the Lord has graciously given us to work together with growing and going, you know, growing in the Lord and going and sharing his word, whether it's the gospel or giving answers for why you believe what you believe. But this verse one, again, I'll give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, all of us are called to do that, w whether it's uh, in a national stage, a public stage, whether it's talking to your neighbor, whether it's just talking to your family, teaching your family, uh, somebody at work, whatever it is. So I, I think if we love something, we're going to talk about it. Yeah. If somebody provides for us, if. Uh, the analogy I gave to the kids was that uh, if I had a pipe burst in my house and it ruined everything and my fam my dad picks up the phone and he calls somebody and they come over and they're actually able to clean up the entire mess that same night. And then he picks up the phone, he calls somebody else and they actually replace all the furniture and all the drywall that very same night, which I know would be impossible. But the, the analogy was that if all of that happened in one night, when you came back to school the next day, that'd be like the first thing on your lips would be, guess what happened to me last night? You know, this amazing provision for me. Yeah. And you know, Jesus dies for our sins, providing salvation for eternity. And I think sometimes even myself, it's sort of like, oh, yeah. But, you know, I've got this big problem now in my life. And but, yeah, I know Jesus died for my sins. But I've got this other problem in my life. I've got this person and I've got this thing and I've got... And so we, we just flip it on its head. So again, give yeah. thanks to the Lord and call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. If we're excited about the Lord, if we love him and we realize that he loves us um, totally undeserved, you know, we should be talking about him to other people. Uh, I also told the kids though, don't feel, don't let the enemy or the flesh get in there and, and make you feel guilty for not going and sharing with people. Uh, maybe it's the Lord though, encouraging you to, you know, step it up. Um, but in reality, I think all of us are called to share. And if we love the Lord, if you feel like you're not sharing enough, then maybe don't pray to go share the Lord more. Maybe just pray and say, Lord, help me to fall in love with you more. Help yeah. me to see how great you are. And then, and then the sharing comes from a heart of love, a heart of thankfulness, a heart of gratitude, instead of an obligation. Oh, I've checked my box. I shared with somebody today. 
but yeah. God, I just love the Lord and I talk about him with others. Verse two says, sing unto him. So not only are we talking to other people, but you know, some people maybe aren't called uh, to be on stage singing, but you can always sing unto the Lord. Mm-hmm. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk of all of his wonderful works. So again, verse two, same thing. So make known his works among the people and then talk about all of his wonderful works. And I know you shared in our other talk about when we were talking about music, a good tie in there too, that a lot of times songs should have edification and teaching in there and correction in there. So, Mm. uh, and then just a couple more verses, verse three, it says glory in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice Mm. that seek the Lord, seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face evermore remember his marvelous works verse five remember his marvelous works that he has done his wonders and the judgment of his mouth and then verse seven it says he is the lord our god his judgments are in all the earth i think the idea of remembering his work and being thankful ties in hand in hand if we're if we're having an issue with you know discontentedness or complaining or grumbling or just feeling down or focused on ourselves then remember his wonderful works. Remember yeah. who the Lord is. And because then I think what happens is our hearts start to grow in his love or grow in who he is, which produces more love from the Holy Spirit. And then that love then overflows to sharing, you know, the truth and his love with others. So Amen. that's what I that's what I had. And um, you know, just don't forget how great God is. He yeah. is a tremendously amazing, beautiful, and awesome and true God. You know, the things that were talk that were going through my head are, are really, I think um, they they flow right together with what you're saying, Flynn, because um, I'm reading through Psalm 105 right now and, and everything about um, making known his deeds among the people, um, um, t- telling of all his wondrous works, seeking the Lord, seeking his presence and remembering the wondrous works. These are all things that you can read all throughout the Psalms and the natural response of when like, let's say David, for instance, when he was going to the temple, he would just naturally praise him on his way. I'm praising you on the way to the temple. Like I'm talking about you and I'm singing about you in public on the way to the temple. Like I'm going to profess your name. Um, and like you said earlier, um, sometimes we beat ourselves up because we don't naturally respond that way. So trying to put our, our eyes and our hearts back on him, it comes down to what you were saying remember the wondrous works. Um, so I, I kind of discovered a little nugget this week and, and I, I know that we don't want to go too far in, in this direction, but no, I but think you were sharing it earlier, Kyle, I had not thought of it before and I think it ties in well, uh, and it has to do with thanks and Thanksgiving is coming up. So yeah, absolutely. Share, I, share your little nugget. I thought it was a good nugget. I think, um, the idea of remembering. So when I was, um, Looking into this, the the Greek word um, that we see throughout the New Testament, um, but one that really comes to my mind is First Thessalonians five, eighteen. That a lot of us know. Starting in verse sixteen, it says, "Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, giving thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you." So, for the Christian, when we read that, we go, "Wow." Okay, well, all these psalmists were talking about constantly praising and professing of his marvelous works. And then in 1 Thessalonians, Paul tells us uh, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to rejoice always. Well, you're talking about times that sometimes we don't really feel like rejoicing. These yeah. tough times, whether, you know, there was a lot of stuff going on recently, whether politically or, or um, you know, with the, the coronavirus and just so many different things going on in the world. Uh, when you read that, you're like, rejoice always. That's a little difficult. I, that's hard, Lord. How do I, how do I do that? And pray without ceasing? You want me to pray nonstop? This is a busy life in America. I got to work 50 hours this week, Flynn. I don't have time uh, with five girls and, and uh, my wife and we're, we're busy. Like, how do I pray without stopping and rejoice the whole time through it? So you start beating yourself up and it becomes this works-based thing. Um, but it ties back to what you're saying. I, I won't rabbit trail too far. That word, give thanks in all circumstances right there. What, what verse is that again? First Thessalonians 5.18. Yes. First Thessalonians 5.18, it, it goes into giving thanks in all circumstances. So amongst all the turmoil, amongst all the distractions, amongst 
even um, overzealous, joyful times where we get so many gifts. You're like, you know, that that prayer, um, I think it's in a, a Ecclesiastes or maybe Proverbs where um, Solomon says, Lord, don't give me too much so that I'm right. distracted. Don't give me too little so that I curse your name. Just give me enough. Yeah. Yeah, the, that's in the Proverbs. Everyone that's watching this, everyone that goes through these circumstances can apply to this verse. Okay. Whatever it is, whether it's too little, too much, the situation at hand right now going into 2021 Thanksgiving, giving thanks in all circumstances, that word give thanks in the Greek is actually Eucharisto. And you go, wow. whoa, 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 the Eucharist. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Yep. Are, you, are you and Flynn talking about the Eucharist now? Um, and, and we're not going to get into too deep of that, but my mind always goes apologetically and wanting to um, redeem uh, the time and, and really defend the faith. And so yeah. uh, when Paul wrote this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, giving thanks in all circumstances is the same um, direction that I believe because it's the same God that wrote the same words in Psalm 105 that said, remember his works, his wonderful works. Well, um, the early church, when you give thanks, that giving thanks naturally stems in the heart, remembering what Christ did for us. And we're not talking in a transubstantiation way about the body um, and the bread becoming the body and the, the um, wine becoming the blood. We're not talking about putting Christ on the cross again. He died once and all for sins. I'm talking about the natural remembrance where where jesus said do this in remembrance of me give thanks right. this heart of recognizing in a busy life in a in a turmoil life in a distracting life we respond giving thanks in all circumstances because it starts with remembering that he died for us flynn he died for you and me and he loved us right. so much, not because of any merit that we had, not because of any circumstance, but because he is so good. And man, that just naturally wants me to be thankful. There's a song by Andrew Peterson that, that he talks about where um, throughout his life, as he's looking at the mountains and he looks at these glorious paintings and he looks at all this beautiful things, we in the world naturally want to thank someone. Don't you want to thank someone, Flynn? When you, yeah. when you get a good gift or you're oh, driving down the road, go ahead. The, the attitude, you know, I remember as a kid, my parents had to remind me, you know, that, that to say thank you, to look at somebody in our culture, looking at somebody when they're talking is, is a sign of respect. I know some cultures it's not, but because of my own pride, it's easy for me to not want to look at people. It's easy for me not to want to say thank you or acknowledge that they're there and uh, when we take time to really acknowledge what God has done, um, I mean, if anything, I mean, the Christian should be the most thankful humans on this planet. Seriously. Yeah. Or, yeah. Because anything above salvation is, is icing on the cake. It's yeah. the gravy. Because salvation is totally unmerited, totally undeserved, offered to everybody. Not everybody chooses the Lord. We get that. But uh, it's offered freely, just like a, a gift. And we have a choice to receive or not receive. Yeah. But when we receive the Lord, and that's where I think it ties in with that idea of Eucharist for the Roman Catholic, it's every week, you know, it's the, it's the ritualistic it's yeah. the sacrament. It's a holy sacrament. It's the uh, mystery and it's the mass and it's the Eucharist and it's a bunch of uh, a falsehood. But mm -hmm. the idea that you're taking something and, and receiving it, and then kind of be sort of becoming one with it as you eat it. Uh, I would say the only thing I, I like about that is at least it gives us a visual connection uh, or analogy maybe to the spiritual, uh, but it has no, I'm not saying the Eucharist is right by any stretch of the imagination. Correct, uh, yeah. From the Catholic Eucharist. But that idea that when we receive the Lord, not a piece of wafer, but the actual living God, Jesus said that, you know, you, that, that we need to believe and we need to receive. And Paul wrote that, but Jesus said, you know, unless you uh, are born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. So we need to be born again. Yeah. Once we receive the Lord, receive his forgiveness, um, we should have an attitude of thankfulness. And, and not like the Joel Osteen, not like the name it, claim it, or the positivity movement kind of people where it's, oh, I'm just going to be thankful, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, again, I go back to 
it's not about trying to be more thankful. If you're no. having an issue with thankfulness, then you need to get back to knowing who God is, knowing who Jesus is, knowing the scriptures. You nailed it. But that's where I think the challenge, a lot of times we talked about this at Bible study last night. So many pastors and so many teachers and musicians, Christian musicians, we have that in the other video coming up, but don't even believe the Bible. You know, they don't believe the word. Yeah. And so they're not teaching the word the way they should. And so believers, even if they are believers, are not being encouraged or equipped not that they can just blame them, but uh, as a culture, as a Christian culture, we're so far removed from trusting this book as our firm foundation yes. that um, we don't have the right tools to even produce godly thankfulness, really. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm, I can be thankful in every circumstance or in every situation because I know this book is true from cover to cover. I mm -hmm. know I can trust God even when somebody's passing away or even when I've got cancer or even when I lost my job. I can trust the Lord because even though circumstances fail, the Lord never does. Yeah. So um, to me, I think it's just a good reminder what you said there. Yeah. Thankfulness is tying in with being that remembrance of who Jesus is and what he's done. They go hand in hand. Yeah. It's a, it's a good reminder that for the Christian um, during this time, uh, this should be naturally flowing through our hearts throughout the year. It shouldn't be a reminder one day a year, although it, it is a good reminder, Flynn. And I'm so glad that you brought it up, but this should be naturally producing throughout our heart. Do this in remembrance. Me It's not a ritualistic idea of perform this so that you can be right with God. The idea is, is, is exactly right there in Psalm 105. Remember the wondrous works. And this, and this especially is important for the Christians watching this because I was talking to my wife about this one time. Um, for the atheists, when, even when they stand on a mountaintop and look off a cliff, their heart goes, wow. Thank you. Well, who are they thanking, Flynn? Right. They, they want to... They, yeah. but they, but it does stem in it our does heart. Stir up this reality yeah. that there's something greater than themselves. Absolutely, Their, scripture is clear. I mean, eternity is written in the hearts of men. Yes. No matter how much we try to suppress the truth, you can't do anything against the truth, but you can do stuff against people's hearts. And so, I think this time of year, um, we get to I point to that person. <laughs> What's that? We, during this time, we get to point to that person, the people that go, wow, I want to be thankful this year. Everyone that yeah, says, yeah, it's Thanksgiving. Say, let's, Jesus. let's be nostalgic. And the Christians get to go, well, I get to tell you uh, yeah. with, a, with humility, because I know the God to be thankful to. And let me point you to him because his wondrous works are amazing. And he died uh, for absolutely. you. You know, yeah. and, amen and to that, buddy. So I, good. I, I have nothing to add to that. Just, I mean, to me, Psalm 105 and what you read in First Thessalonians chapter 5 really does tie it all together. And it all points to Christ. It all points to the Jesus of the Bible. Amen. You know, not to some Christ consciousness or positivity thinking, but to the true and living God who, you know, isn't in the grave. He's risen. Amen. He is risen. And we'll get there, you know, in a, several months we'll be talking about he is risen. But for the Christian, that's every day. So Amen. Uh, encouraging believers out there, stand firm with joy in your hearts. The joy of the Lord is our strength, being thankful to him. And then make known his deeds, you guys. Go ahead and share his, his truth with other people. Don't, don't be afraid to open your mouth. If you love the Lord, then, then talk about him yeah. and see where the Lord takes it. Um, Sing about and, him. You know, I have found talking to people about the Lord produces even more excitement in my heart, even mm. more uh, thankfulness to him. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Not, not in a, a an overly, um, you know, works but like, cause I know like earlier in my walk and, and, and not to get too off topic, but early in my walk, I remember thinking evangelizing made me closer with the Lord as well. You know, like a merits base, like I, our hearts are so desperately wicked, even amongst yeah. good things, we go backwards, but no, it, it really does. Um, it just knits your heart with the Lord where um, the more you talk about him, you're like, man, why do I stop talking about you, God? Yeah. You know? Um, so amen. Yeah. Amen for sure. So happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. And obviously for our country in America here, we're, we're thankful for what the Lord did early on in our country. Our country obviously is not perfect. It's made of people. 
Yeah. And uh, that is not going to change uh, anytime <laughs> soon until war returns. But um, I would say that our country does afford still a lot of freedom. So I would hope that we would want to use the freedom until he returns. Uh, whatever freedoms we have left with joy in our hearts, again, just reminding people to be joyful. Um, it's easy with COVID and all the junk going on and then the busyness of the season and um, we get our minds off the Lord. And that only, that only uh, does exactly what the enemy wants, you know, glorifying anything but Jesus. So we want to give all the glory to him. Amen. Thankful for you too, buddy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, buddy. Um, and so I will wrap it up there, you guys. Happy Thanksgiving and just stay thankful to the Lord and make his deeds known among the people, you guys. Till next time, take care. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. God bless.